Hey everybody, thanks for coming to check out my channel. Uh, if these videos start to take off in the future, I will probably start making more content. I just kind of want to put this video out and test the waters and see kind of how it is received and if it's worth pursuing. Uh, if you like these videos, please let me know by liking, commenting, or subscribing, and I will be more motivated to continue making these. Uh, just to give everybody a little background on me, I am a software developer. I've been working in the industry for about a year now since graduating in 2019. Uh, I've always been passionate about technology growing up, and as such, I consider myself pretty well-versed in it today. Uh, I've always had Windows computers growing up, mainly because, uh, you know, in the early 2000s, uh, like, there was typically a household computer. Uh, not everybody had their own laptop. They were a lot more expensive, I think. Uh, my first computer was, like, uh, I think my mom bought it for, like, $600, uh, and we shared that. Um, and it was definitely, I know the graphics card that my dad eventually put in it had only 512 megabytes of uh, VRAM, so y you can imagine the, the specs of the computer were probably not very good for the price. Um, I'm sure that's very different today with kids probably getting their first laptop a lot earlier, uh, but this is just my experience. I uh, eventually started gaming on these computers. Um, so growing up I always you know Windows was always my favorite platform I would never consider getting a Mac uh, growing up because really all I valued in a computer was being able to game um, and so Macs obviously were out of my price range anyway but if they weren't I knew that I wouldn't want them because I wouldn't be able to play games on them um, hold on a sec as I went off to college, um, it was time for me to buy my first true laptop. Um, in my price range, I decided to get a MSI gaming laptop because my budget was uh, like $1,500 or so. I don't quite remember. Um, and that was the best gaming laptop I could get at the time for the price. Uh, soon, though, once I started school with it, I realized, you know, it only has like a two-hour battery life. Um, obviously that's changed a lot of gaming laptops today have much better battery life um, than they did back then but this was just my experience I eventually sold that laptop as I entered my sophomore year uh, to get a surface book uh, because it boasted its 16 hours of battery life and I still was convinced that I did not want a MacBook um, I got this laptop used on Craigslist for about 1600 bucks um, otherwise, it would have retailed for about the same price as a MacBook Pro, um, and I probably would have been able to get neither, but, um, you know, I, in, at the time, I may have still chosen to get the Windows Surface instead of getting a MacBook Pro. However, you know, throughout school, I was always jealous in class that my classmates' MacBooks just seemed to be a lot easier, the software was a lot more well-supported, um, and they're Unix-based machines, so, you know, being a software developer in computer science, it was just a lot easier, uh, it seemed, for my classmates to do their work on their MacBooks, whereas I had to use a, uh, I think it's like a Ubuntu for Windu Windows um, plug-in, which it, it was pretty good, honestly, but... Um, you know, you run into things here or there where it just doesn't work properly, and they're still updating it, and it's getting better. But, you know, just being built on top of Linux is just a much more useful thing for coders to have. So, anyway, now I'm graduated. I've been working for about a year. My job, I do, I'm app developer. Uh, my job has given me a MacBook Pro 15-inch. Um, and, you know, I just love to work on it. It just, when you open it up and you start to work on it, you, you just feel like you're going to be more productive than if you were to open a Windows-based machine. And, you know, now that I'm older and I, I'm not really gaming as much as I used to, um, I kind of value having a machine with no games on it to avoid distracting me uh, and can, you know, motivate me to actually get work done when I open it. Um, so... Yeah, I used it for work for a little while. Um, I decided that I wanted to get my own uh, MacBook for personal use, so I purchased the 2019 MacBook Pro 16-inch, and I used that. Um, I have dual-booted boot, dual Windows on it, so I am still kind of like not ready to completely give up gaming, but 
you know, I'm not as hardcore of a gamer as I used to be, and, you know, I, I think just being able to play a few games and having the option to dual boot Windows and how well Windows runs on the MacBook is already a plus. Um, and, of course, then the macOS side of things I can use for work and, um, you know, just any type of thing I want to be productive for or even just media consumption, um, you know, it just feels better on a Mac. Um, and you know that could just be the sunk cost because these devices are so expensive and you kind of need to like justify it in your head as to why you purchased it and so you use it and you know convince yourself to like it more um but you know before this i, I had an iphone um i had iphone for all my phones i think my first phone was in ninth grade i got an iphone 4s uh had kept iphones until like sophomore year i think of school i got a a Galaxy Note 7 and then they recalled them because the batteries were catching on fire um, and then they eventually recalled them a second time and just said that you couldn't get it anymore so then I switched to the Google Pixel um, and things were going alright for a while but you know I just started running into a lot of problems the battery life just started you know going to crap it wouldn't last uh, a single day on the battery life I had to um, charge it almost all day and when you're in school that's really hard to do i mean you can carry on a portable battery bank but then you don't really want to you know have to charge it all day and be tied to this cable i don't know so i eventually uh went and i traded it in and i went and got an iphone x the same phone that i still have today um and you know it's just it's been you know three years since i've had the phone two or three years i don't remember exactly um but you know no problems with the phone uh, the battery life is getting worse now, but I mean, it's still at this stage is better than the Pixel was. Um, the software updates are still coming in. Um, you know, now, now that you know I'm responsible for you know buying a new device, you know I'm not as inclined to want to upgrade my phone because you know it still works just as good for what I need it for. Whereas when I was a kid and you know the Verizon two-year upgrade plan. You know, every two years on your birthday, you're like, okay, this year I want to get a new phone, so you ask for a new phone, um, and that's typically what I would do. I would two every two years, I'd want to get the new phone for my birthday. Um, but now, now that I'm older, I just don't value upgrading the phone right away. I don't, I don't feel the the new features on the phones are worth the money investment. And you know, I'm either going to use this phone until it just stops working, or the battery just gets so bad it has to be replaced or uh, I'm really interested in like dual phone or dual screen technology like with the new Samsung and the new Microsoft uh, phones that are coming out with the two screens and there may be some other ones um, that are coming out soon that I haven't kept up with but you know if Apple were to announce that they were going to do that I would be convinced that it would be worth upgrading it just to see but anyway um, on to the, the next thing so it's like the MacBook and the iPhone, one of the major incentives for me besides the reliability for switching over back to iPhone was that uh, my girlfriend had an iPhone, all my friends in college had iPhones, and, you know, iMessage, you know, is just the main factor for a lot of people. Like, they just want to have iMessage, um, and then, you know, there's other secondary factors that I don't use, like sending people money or whatever, and emojis, uh, all that stuff is possible only if you have an iPhone but you know just kind of being able to sync those messages between uh, your laptop and your phone is an awesome feature to have um, and I, I see now that Samsung is trying to do that for Windows in the future um, and we'll see how that well that works out but you know it's it's just nice to be able to seamlessly do all of those things no matter which device you're using just because you're in the same ecosystem and so I think my next Apple purchase was the Apple watch and I got that because um, you know I was having some health issues and I wanted to like keep an eye on my heart rate and stuff while I was at work and school um, and so I mean that was a big selling point for me um, obviously already being ingrained in the ecosystem as well knowing uh, that I was going to be getting Apple products for the foreseeable future because of this 
reliability that their products offer that I, I now value a lot more. So I decided to get the Apple Watch. Um, wanted a smart watch. Used to have smart watches, the Pebble Watch. That was like way early. I think I was in middle school when that came out. Um, after that, I had a, a LG smart watch. I don't know. I don't remember the name of it. Um, but neither of those watches really, you know, did anything useful for me. Um, but the Apple Watch, you know, being able to get notifications from your phone and reply to them on your phone, uh, get get your health data, everything synced up to your phone. You can do sleep tracking, things like that. I found very useful to me personally. Um, but you know justifying the cost going back you know i'd say if it weren't for the heart rate tracking i probably couldn't justify the purchase just because like it's not really that necessary but you know it's just one more thing to add to be into the ecosystem um and then you know before i think i touched on buying my mac earlier i, I got a mac mini initially because to do any sort of ios development you need to have a uh, mac computer to develop to get a license to develop on their store so I initially got a Mac mini because it was cheaper you could upgrade the RAM um, so you could sort of future proof it in a sense and it had Thunderbolt 3 so you could connect external SSDs to it and it it would last a while but I quickly realized that you know a big part of my productivity is being able to get away from a desk so I eventually sold it and I bought the MacBook that I talked about um, and you know it, it is a big purchase to get a MacBook but you know I, d I bought it because I know that you know five years from now it's still gonna work ten years from now it's still gonna work I probably won't keep it for that long but I know that in three to five years when I decide to sell it it'll still probably fetch at least forty to sixty percent of the value that I paid for it which is money I can spend towards buying the next product and you know with a Windows computer or Android anything tablets phones you, you notice when you try to sell them they just they don't hold their value quite as well and then on top of that you get Apple Care. I know some other companies offer good support like the Surface program has decent support. I've had to use that before. Um, but the the Apple support is just above and beyond. I mean y it isn't cheap. You do pay for it but it's worth it to get the peace of mind and also if you're going to sell your product before it ends it can really help your resale value to give people peace of mind that it's fully transferable and if anything goes wrong with it they can take it in the Apple store and get it looked at, get it fixed, um, and they feel a little better spending that much money on it. Because um, a lot of people that aren't power users, aren't developers, a five-year-old machine, they could probably use it for another five years and be just fine, just browsing the internet, checking email, watching videos, whatever they do. Um, so that that's touched on that. And then, you know, lately we've got things like Apple TV, uh, my girlfriend has one. I don't have one, but if I were to buy, if I were to need another thing, so I've got Roku built into my TV, and my Vizio TV has built-in stuff. Um, if I had to buy like a normal like thing to plug in my TV, um, you know, it is kind of expensive, but yeah, you're paying for the ability to, like cast from your phone. Sometimes you want to watch videos that you can find online that aren't on streaming platforms. You can cast them straight from your phone to the TV. Um, and it's a lot easier than using something like Chromecast or like um, just any other type of like non-directly Apple to Apple casting system works well. Um, and then you've got other things built into it like Apple Music uh, is another service. Um, so, you know, that product has a lot of competition. My problem with it is just so expensive uh, that the Roku is just probably the better get if you're just trying to watch netflix hulu youtube or whatever um but it is there and a lot of people do like it um it's reliable so that that's just another thing in their ecosystem and then lately um the apple credit card has come out which is like the uh, the weirdest thing i feel like they've added to their ecosystem um i did get it but only because i used a really bad credit card in college to build my credit history soon uh, and it has like really high interest rates, uh, no benefits, no cash back, nothing. So when I heard about the Apple Card, I applied to it at like the beta program and they gave it to me and they gave me a, a decent limit. Um, and now I use it for every purchase that I can because of the cash back and then I'll just pay it off 
immediately with my debit card because it's you know it's free money. Um, I know there's better credit cards out there, um, but this is still new. Um, and right now the cashback, like I said, is better on other credit cards that you can get. But Apple is working to increase that. Like it's one percent with the card, two percent with anything you use Apple Pay for, which I'd say right now is about ten percent of purchases you can make online, except Apple Pay. Um, they're working to get that higher um, to get more people to start accepting that as a payment method. But uh, you know, in the future, you know, you could see this being one of the best credit cards once these companies start accepting Apple Pay more frequently and then they're also partnering with a lot of companies like uber is just the one off the top of my head uh purchases you make with apple you get three percent cash back um so you could be seeing more three percent cash back stuff in the future um and then it goes straight to your apple cash which goes straight to your bank you know it's all just very convenient that's what you get with apple is everything just works um yeah, they kind of restrict you sometimes, but the things that should always work, you, you pretty much are never going to have a problem with. Um, and then, you know, like, like I said, um, lately I've been getting, you know, bored of gaming, so I've wanted to, like, branch out and try new hobbies. So I've purchased an iPad Pro. Um, now this, this I consider to be very overpriced, the iPad Pro. Um you know it's it's very limiting you know for something that's almost the price of a macbook or a macbook pro uh it really the mac mac or uh, what do they call it ipad os they really just don't have enough functionality yet they're depending on the app developers to create quality applications for the ipad to justify its existence and then at the price you know it, they start you out with I think uh, the new base model is either 64 or 128 gigabytes. I got the 256. It goes up to one terabyte. Um, they all have six gigabytes of RAM, uh, which kind of surprised me because, you know, apps like Procreate, Photoshop, um, any type of like Adobe software, Premiere Pro, things that Apple is advertising that you really can do well on uh, an iPad and, you know, could replace some people's computers um, like they're claiming. Uh, really could probably use the extra RAM so I'm surprised that they only did six gigabytes considering the cost um, but you know that's their decision and you know in the future we could see that increase I know it just increased from the 2018 model which was four gigabytes um, to now the six gigabyte however they they do have apps like procreate um, and you know some other apps that are only on iPad not on Android that uh, people really appreciate especially used in conjunction with the Apple Pencil um, which has really low latency and you know people will argue that it's you know the best tablet for drawing maybe I mean you have like other ones for like Wacom and things like that but some people just prefer to draw on the tablet and um, you know in that price range you know you're probably not gonna find a better tablet I would say for drawing um, but you know and then you have a tablet you can use for like watching watching tv or watching youtube or reading your email or whatever and then you know play old school runescape you know what whatever you want to do really um you know it's just like a a big iphone at that point you know some people probably get more use out of it um but you know that's just been kind of my use case so so now you can kind of see with the products that i've lined out that i'm very ingrained in the apple ecosystem now um, so, you know, a, a great new phone could come out tomorrow. It's, you know, it's an Android or it has its own new operating system, you know, what have you. Um, no matter how cool it is and how much I wanted it, there's a lot of things that are going to need to, I mean, it's going to make it a lot harder to, to go get that phone and go switch from my iPhone to that phone because you lose out on iMessage, you lose out on iCloud, you lose out on your, everything being synced between your devices, uh, you know, to pay off your credit card is in the wallet app. Uh, I haven't kept up to see if you can pay for it, uh, you know, on a website yet without an iPhone or, you know, how that really works. Um, but any device you change, if you were to get a new Android tablet or if you were to get a new laptop, but you were to keep all the other devices, it would make the usability of your other devices 
less enjoyable because you would lose some of that seamless interconnectivity that makes them makes the Apple ecosystem so nice and something so many people uh, like to see. <coughs> Sorry. So you know that's that's my take on the Apple ecosystem. It's like just so many so many pieces of technology, and you know they're still releasing more. And, you know, we don't really know what they're going to come out with in the future, but they're really just trying to tie you into this ecosystem, so it makes it incredibly hard to leave. Um, and, you know, if that's something you're worried about, that's something you should consider before you start purchasing all of these devices, because it will, in doubt, be a factor of how you spend your money in the future. Um, and now, that's not to say it's a, it's a bad idea, because, you know, the, the offerings from Apple, yes, they're very expensive and overpriced, um, but for professionals and, you know, just people that like reliable devices, nice, shiny, pretty things that are well-machined, well-built, uh, great service, you know, you're going you're gonna to probably get your money's worth just on the longevity of the machines. You know, it's a $3,000 laptop versus like a $1,500 Windows counterpart that you have to replace in two years. You're probably going to... I mean, it's it's going to be about to be break even, but you might enjoy the experience you had along the way more because the performance of the device didn't degrade severely over the course of those years. Now, that's not to say Apple hasn't made mistakes with the butterfly keyboard and batteries and recalls and defective screens, you know, what have you. But if they do something like that, there's a good chance they're going to make it right. Um, and you know you, you're spending the money to have a device that you know will last for that many years, whereas the money you're saving up front with the the Windows or whatever purchase you make, you're probably gonna spend that money again replacing it in the time you would have kept your other device. Um, and then, as I mentioned earlier, the resale value market for non-Apple products is generally a lot lower than the resale the value of a Mac. Um, you know, so the way I see it, like the first Mac or first iPad, whatever you purchase, is going to be the most expensive because you can't resell that on eBay, Reddit, Swappa, Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, Let Go, whatever, uh, to to recoup some of that money back to purchase your next device. Um, which is another thing to keep in mind when you're considering the price. Um, that the these devices are usually um, sought after for a good while and they're a lot easier and a lot faster to get rid of if you want to sell them um so you know that that's just my thoughts and feelings on it you know it, it could change in the future but r right now I, I think that uh the apple ecosystem is just the right place to be um and if you're a gamer uh you know i have a gaming pc it runs windows um that's really the best combination is to have a gaming PC and a Mac laptop. That way you can kind of get the best of both worlds because obviously you don't want to you don't want to game on a Mac. Um, it's not going to go well typically. I mean you can before people say that you definitely can and I'm wrong. Uh, I mean you can but you're not going to get the performance you would out of a, a gaming desktop and especially you know it's pretty cheap to build a decent gaming desktop these days so um, definitely would go that route. Um, you know, one thing I didn't touch on too is software. Um, typically for professionals anyway, a lot of it is catered towards Mac, uh, especially the Adobe suite is usually really well made on Mac. A lot of the tutorials, and this applies to tutorials for things like Unity and, you know, this is just my experience, but like any, any sort of like, any sort of software, there's, when you look up tutorials online, you'll, you'll watch the video and the person making the tutorial will be using a macbook or something and it'll be a lot harder to follow along with on a windows computer because you're kind of having to find the menu buttons and stuff that are different your shortcuts are different um some of the software could be behind in version number or whatever um so that's another thing to keep in mind is you know the software is usually a lot easier to support on apple side because they only have so many different devices and so many different hardware configurations it's a lot easier for companies to develop and push out software that will work well on all these machines because they can thoroughly test them on all the different devices as they make it 
and with a Windows computer you have, you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of different Windows laptops available. Um, and you, you get a lot more bugs, a lot more problems, um, just because it's harder to support all of that hardware from different manufacturers, different speeds, you know, whatever. It's, it's just a lot harder to support a lot more different devices. And you see that on the mobile side of things. Like me personally as an app developer, developing apps on iPhone is a lot easier because there's so much fewer iPhones available uh, in my opinion Xcode and other developer tools are a lot better than things like Android Studio um, the emulator is more reliable um, yeah generally it's much better to work on Apple stuff because you know in addition to the other companies making software for them Apple also it doesn't have to support a wide range of hardware and they can thoroughly test on all of their hardware to make sure it works before they push something to production for people to like consumers like me to to use the products so um you know that pretty much covers everything i think uh if you stayed watching up until this point thank you uh sorry it's a little rough this is my first try at this first video uh just gonna kind of put it out there and see what happens but you know hopefully this is well received i know i know this is kind of a polarizing issue for a lot of people um but you know try not to roast me too bad in the comments this is just kind of how i feel about it um you know i understand like money is usually the biggest factor in these decisions so i know these products are expensive and not everybody can have them but you know in a perfect world where everybody could have what they wanted you know i think a vast majority of people would choose you know apple stuff but you know feel free to tell me i'm wrong in the comments i uh, appreciate you guys watching uh, let me know any uh, comments you have about you know how to improve the video quality. The right, right now this is recording on my phone, uh, and I'm gonna try to sync the audio up from this microphone. Um, and my phone's just sitting on top of the iPad box um, in front of my monitor screen. So, um, you know, if this takes off, I'll work on upgrading the quality of this, and you know, I'll try to try to not do so many off-the-cuff videos in the future. Um, you know, try to plan them out a little better and. You know, maybe if this takes off, you know, be able to get my hands on a lot of products and like do in-depth analysis and stuff. But for now, this is what we've got. So once again, thanks for watching. Uh, have a good day, good night, whatever. See you later.